Boy, oh boy. Dorian Yates, the famous, not infamous, bodybuilder, has called out reps in reserve training. They are <laughs> reps in reserve training for losers. Fellow British man Dorian Yates is out there saying that reps in reserve training is wanker training. Essentially, I wouldn't say asshole, but like loser training, essentially making fun of people who leave reps in reserve because reps in reserve is this super easy training approach, this training method they're sabotaging your gains but let's see what the guy actually said i read online somewhere you're a big fan of reps in reserve training can you give us a bit of insight on that? yeah 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 because <laughs> i don't like what your views on it. i don't like it when like the muscle starts burning and you feel uncomfortable i think that's not good for you no you want. should put the weight down at that point yeah because i mean who wants to be uncomfortable it's not, it can't be good yeah. for you can it no no that clearly doesn't work. Reps in reserve. We've got a different uh, term for that in England. It's called a wanker's workout. <laughs> uh, it's very technical, an English term. You can look it up if you like. My fans from America don't quite understand what a wanker is. Uh, it's people that do reps in reserve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's English or Australians also might use the term wanker. But yeah, look it up. Ah, the classic argument that reps in reserve training is easy training and it's this sort of methodology that people are using. Reality check, people. Go watch multiple high-level beast bodybuilders. Kevin Lebron, Phil Heath, Jay Cutler, even Ronnie Coleman to an extent, Lee Priest, Sebum, uh, many. Go watch training videos of IFBB pros. You will see that many of their sets do not end at the point of training true failure the point where you're trying to do another rep and you cannot do it and then you drop the weight many sets and way before that But obviously that's not proof of anything. Elite genetic freaks on PEDs are not a source of evidence. The same way we're not going to take Dorian Yates training as gospel because Dorian Yates was an amazing bodybuilder. The same way we're not going to look at Jay Cutler's training and be like, okay, the guy left 40 reps in reserve here. That's what I'm going to do. Or Phil Heath's squad, for example. When it comes to proximity to failure and muscle growth, we consistently see that you have to train extremely hard in order to maximize gains. That means being very close to failure or to failure if you're only doing very low volumes of training. And at the end of the video, I'll talk about the few scenarios where actually going to failure all the time makes a bit more sense than leaving reps in reserve. However, and this is coming from a failure enjoyer, from a failure lover, from an absolute enthusiast of training to failure. I train everything to failure to the point where I'm unable to perform partial reps. It makes training easy and simple, and I don't like training with reps in reserve. However, I would be a fool if I was to sit here and tell you that the current scientific evidence supports the idea that you need to train this way. Even if you leave one or two reps in reserve, as long as they are true one or two reps in reserve, you can still likely maximize gains. But this is what really grinds my gears. Reps in reserve is not easy training. A true one rep in reserve set is a set where the bar has slowed down massively and you have one rep left if there was somebody there with a gun on your head saying perform two reps. That's a true one rep in reserve set. Same goes with a two reps in reserve set. A squad performed at two reps in reserve is a very hard set of squats. Same with any other exercise. It's super annoying, and this video is mostly for those of you out there who may be confused, but it's totally fine if you want to leave a few reps in reserve here. We even 
have recent evidence showing that training consistently at one rep in reserve led to the same gains as varying your proximity to failure and sort of starting from four reps in reserve and progressing to one rep in reserve over time. For some people, for whatever reason, the discomfort of training to failure may be too much. Does that make you a loser? A P word as some would say. Yes, and that's okay. It's 2025. It's all good. No, I'm joking. Obviously joking. You're still training hard. It doesn't make you a loser. It doesn't make you the P word. It doesn't make you a wanker. It just means that you didn't take the set to failure. And it's as simple as that. Training to failure shouldn't be one's identity. And keep in mind, you're still training very hard. This is where G-checking yourself comes in play. And now some of the cases where training to failure may actually be useful. Despite the literature showing us that people are very accurate at estimating how close they are to failure in lab settings, as a coach, having worked with multiple people, including very high level physique and strength athletes, in practice, that's not always the case. So taking some of your sets to failure is obviously not going to hurt your gains. It's not going to lead to so much fatigue that you can't do this and you can't do that. And at the end of the day, it will G-check your ability to know that you're truly close to failure. Additionally, and shout out to Tom Herman, Herman et al, study showing that when training with very low volumes, training to failure may provide a bit of an edge to leaving a couple of reps in reserve. And that's to how Dorian approached his training. So for somebody like Dorian Yates, who is one of the best bodybuilders ever, taking everything to failure, given that he was only doing a few sets, was a way for him to make sure that he's getting as much as he can from every set. However, if you're not only performing a handful of sets per muscle group per week, you can leave one, two reps in reserve and be fine. You don't need to think of things in black and white. It doesn't need to be either reps in reserve or either everything to failure. Take some sets to failure. If you're pushing yourself hard, you will eventually hit failure on a few sets here and there. Leave one, two, maybe three reps in reserve on some sets and you're absolutely covered. Even in our app, MyAdapt, which you can download and try for two weeks for free using code Dr. Pat, go to myadapt.com or the Apple or Google Play Store. Um, we have the option to either have the app guide you and give you reps in reserve or for the app to not give you reps in reserve. I use the latter. However, MyAdapt will fully guide and progress your training. Thank you, Chris, for ruining the video. Chris Sitas here, absolutely spoiled friend. Chris Sitas, if you're Greek, check out his YouTube channel. However, overall, you do not need to overthink proximity to failure or be in a camp of training to failure or not training to failure. I get it. We all want to be part of a specific tribe, but at the end of the day, you just have to train hard consistently. Whether that's at zero or two reps in reserve is not going to be a big deal. Do both. Thank you. Take care. Subscribe. Peace.